So then, with this diagram, there are a lot of things we can do with it. One, trying to identify or do some computations out of this three-phase diagram. So now we've been able to establish the various components of the three-phase system. And so we want to use them to find the volume relationships or the volumetric ratios that exist on the right side. And so there's something we call the void ratio. So void ratio is where I want to find out, I want to kind of measure the amount of empty spaces with respect to the solid spaces within the soil sample or the porous rock sample. So the solids within the sample and then the volume or the empty spaces within the sample. I want to find a ratio of these two and find out how that value is to know which one is raining or which one is higher. So if I pick the volume of voids and it is higher than the solids, that will tell me that this particular rock sample or this particular soil sample has got more empty spaces compared to the solid spaces. And so it is the volume of the voids within the sample that is that of the empty space being occupied by both air and water, VV, over that of the solids. Then I have porosity, trying to measure the volume of the void. So remember, that one volume of void, I am summing that of the volume of the air, the volume of water, all over the total volume, VT. And this is, so that of void ratio, I am dealing with respect to the solids. And then with porosity, the denominator is the total volume of the entire sample, which is this. Good. So then we have something we call degree of saturation. So note this, void ratio, we don't express that into percentage. Why? Because you are not dealing it dealing with the entire sample. So you cannot say it is 90%. That would be wrong. But then porosity is checking the void spaces with respect to the entire solid sample. A, a sample, soil sample or rock sample you have got. And so you can express that as a percentage and find out what percentage of your rock or soil sample is filled or is empty or are having empty voids. So you can express that. Then we have degree of saturation. This one, you want to find out the quantity of water your rock has consumed. So you remember we said that So we remember in the earlier slides, we made mention that your soil sample can be fully saturated, which means it is, and all the void, the possible void spaces or empty spaces, one thing exists within the rock sample are all filled with water. And when that happens, we have saturation as 100%. So we are saying your saturation is 100%. And then we have got a situation where the soil sample may be dry and so you don't have saturation. So saturation becomes zero. So you want to measure the degree of saturation, how soaked the soil sample really is. So don't confuse moisture, volume of water and whatnot, but this time around you want to measure this though, as in how soaked the void, the soil sample is, is what you want to measure. And so that one, you are taking the volume of the water you have measured from the three-phase diagram as against the volume of the voids you have got. So that one is taking the volume of the water, VW here, volume of the water content within the sample over this section, which is VV that of air and water. So you are looking at VW over volume of air plus volume of the water. This is what you are seeking to do for degree of saturation. And so, but you also know that this VA plus VW is known as VV. And that's how come you have that there. Then when we come to the weight section, 
we have got what we call the water content. So water content is trying to find out the amount of water. The amount of water. It's just like you finding void, uh, void ratio. So you wanted to see the quantity of void within the soil sample with respect to the solids in it. This time around, you want to find out the quantity of water with respect to the solids in it, the ratio. And that one, because you are picking that with respect to the entire sample as 100%, then the solids is represented as 100%. And so this one is expressed in percentage. Then we have the soil unit weight, okay? Soil unit weight. So unit weight have already been explained earlier that we want to find out the weight of the sample with respect to volume, okay? So you know the total volume of the soil sample, which is VT, as we've already determined from the phase diagram. And this WS, remember, we said that it is the weight of the solids, okay? Weight of the solids, WS is weight of solids, which is here. So if I'm finding a ratio of it, so it's just like you've been able, so dry unit weight, you know unit weight, which is gamma is equal to the mass of the sample times what? Gravity all over, then the volume of the sample. But this time around, you are being specific. The mass of the sample or the density of the sample may contain water. But then here you want to find out after the sample has been dried and it only contains only, it becomes a two-phase diagram where you have only the solid section. So you have a two-phase diagram where you have only the solid section and then the void spaces, which is VV. So now it has become a two-phase system. And so with this two-phase system, you want to measure the density of the solids, the weight density of the solids. And so we term that as dry density. So dry density becomes the weight of the solid sample after it has been dried over the entire volume of the sample. And that will give you what we call the dry unit weight of the sample. Then we also have other books that will say total, total unit weight, wet unit weight, bulk unit weight, moist unit weight. Please note that it is all the same. So unit weight or unit weight without anything attached, bulk unit weight, wet unit weight, dry unit, uh, total unit weight, sorry, wet unit weight, bulk, moist, or just saying unit weight. All of it is you trying to find the weight density of the soil sample, which contains, may contain water in it. So that's why you are not specific. You don't want to find out after it has been dried. But this time around, you want to find out even in the presence of water, you want to see the weight density. That will help you know the influence of water in your sample's weight. So that one is also given as this. And that one, the weight of the solid plus the weight of water over the total volume of the sample. Then we have got saturated unit weight. Saturated unit weight is, remember, we have said that saturated unit weight is when your sample is totally submerged fully. All the void spaces are filled with water. So you realize that that one, doesn't look different from what you know here. So saturated unit with considering 100%, you are looking at 100% saturation. And so your void or the volume of air is going to be zero. This one, you don't have any volume of air at all within the soil sample. But when it comes to unit weight, the normal or conventional unit weight, you may have void spaces within. So you need to be sure that the sample they have given you, it has no 
volume for air, as in all the empty spaces within the sample are being filled with water or the liquid within the sample. And so you say you are looking for gamma sat, which is saturated unit weight of the sample. So sometimes we may find ways to connect the density or the unit weight ratios which connect the volumetric side of. So just as we saw in the three phase, we have the weight session and we have the volume session. So with this, there are other instances where we have to combine or link them to facilitate our calculations. And so there is one unit that links them. And this one is specific gravity. Specific gravity is trying to check the weight of something with respect to water. You want to know how heavy an item is with respect to water. And so when you do that, then at this temperature of the water, and so we have our GS, which is the specific gravity, is equal to the weight of the solids you have determined over the volume of the solid. So you see, times the unit weight of water, which we knew right from the first or second slide from this lecture, that it is 9.81 kilo Newton per meter cube. Remember, it's a constant that you have to keep. Good, so the specific gravity of a certain material is the ratio of the unit weight of that material to the unit weight of water. So you can also express specific gravity too in terms of their unit weight. So you knowing the unit weight of that sample to the unit weight of water. That one can also give you specific gravity. Or just finding the density of the sample over the density of a particle of water. And that can also give you specific gravity. So you are checking the heaviness of an item with respect to water. So whatever it is, so you can use unit weight or use density. What is the difference? Here you are just looking at multiplying this density by gravity and here the same thing. So at the end of the day, you have the same value. So then specific gravity of solid is often needed for various calculations in our soil and rock mechanics. So here, let's take a look at GS. So this is what I was explaining, as in unit weight over unit weight. So here, the solids of the sample over that of unit weight of water. So you have this expression. So specific gravity of water is usually considered as one and that of mercury is known as known to be 13. That of soil may usually range up to about 2.7 or 2.8. And rock may vary depending on the type of rock you are dealing with, because we know several rock material have got are heavier than water. And so you can have some as high as 14 in terms of specific gravity.